Have you found yourself struggling to talk about painful emotions? Have you felt like the words get caught in your throat like a traffic jam? Maybe your child is struggling to express what's going on for them, but they show you with their feelings uh, through their behavior. If that's happening, it's just a normal part of the way our nervous system works and there are ways to help with that. My name is Raina Lombardi and I am the clinical manager and founder here at Florida Art Therapy Services. We have a team of therapists here that specialize in hands-on experiential based therapy approaches. What that means is while we will engage in talk therapy interventions, we also have people doing hands-on experiences, being playful, being creative, and, um, and being active in the therapy process. And that can be helpful because we learn through experience um, and the experiences and interventions that we're doing can also later be used on your own to help manage and cope more effectively during stressful times. If you'd like to meet our team of highly qualified and trained therapists, check out their videos on their Meet page. And you can find that on the menu of our website under About Us. What are some art materials or mediums used in an art therapy session? Well, you can probably see behind me, we're in the play space in the practice, and there's a variety of materials that we have to choose from. And we have more um, grown up style art materials in the studio space. And the materials that we use will range from markers to oil pastels to uh, chalk pastels watercolor paint, acrylic paint, collage materials, printmaking, and even clay and sculptural art materials. The materials that you use in your art therapy appointment will be based on the goals that you and your therapist are working towards. Will I make art in the first art therapy appointment? And that really depends. Usually in our first appointment, we want to go over all of your paperwork. We want to understand your history. We want to know what has happened, what your symptoms are, where you're being affected, where life is feeling a bit challenging. And we want to really determine what are the goals that we want to use our time together to work on. In that first session, we're also going to be going over all of the paperwork. So we're going to be talking about what confidentiality is and when and why we might need to break confidentiality because there are a few things that we might need to, um, to do that around. We also will be talking about our general administrative policies and how we work here at Florida Art Therapy Services. If time permits, at the end of the session, your therapist might ask you to do an arts-based assessment. And usually that's gonna be some kind of drawing. It might be a bird's nest drawing. It might be a house tree person drawing. It might be a drawing of you doing something with your family together. But that will be determined based on the conversation that you have. Um, in the beginning of that appointment. How often will I meet with my therapist? Well, again, there's no uh, right or wrong way, but usually we'll meet with new clients once a week, at least for the first month or so, to make sure that we're establishing a strong foundation within the relationship. All therapy happens between the relationship with you and your therapist. And that's really important. If you don't feel comfortable with your therapist, let us know so that we can find the right person for you to work with. Because if you don't feel comfortable, you're probably not gonna be honest about what's going on and you might not 
listen to some of the skills that your therapist is working to um, help you bring into your life. So if you don't feel comfortable, let us know and we'll work towards finding you somebody who you do feel comfortable with, even if that's somebody else in our community. After you've been working with your therapist for a while, you all will discuss how things are going. And if you're making progress, you might reduce from once a week to once every other week or once a month. Now, people are often curious, how long does therapy last? Again, that really is dependent upon your individual needs and situation and what goals you want to experience from therapy. Most people get to a place where they say, you know what, I feel really good. I think I'm ready to slow down or I'm ready to kind of end therapy. And that's great. We encourage you to have those conversations with your therapist so that we can make sure that you're not coming in when you don't need to be. What does the first therapy appointment look like? In the other part of the video where I talked about what the first art therapy appointment would look like, no matter what modality your therapist is using in session with you, the first appointment is gonna be pretty similar. We're gonna go over all of your intake paperwork. That means we're gonna go over the consents for treatment, what all of the things mean, what are your rights and responsibilities and our um, policies uh, that we use to make sure that we're giving you the best care. We'll also be asking questions about your history. So we ask that everybody use our private portal that is assigned to you when you make your initial appointment to come in and complete all of the paperwork within 24 hours before coming in. This way, your therapist has enough time to look over, read through, and formulate follow-up questions based on the history that you provided. And we'll go over those follow-up questions in the first appointment. It will also help us understand if we need to select more specific types of assessments to rule out or to determine more accurately what is happening for you. What's the cause of those symptoms? Because when we know that, we're better able to create interventions that will help you feel better. If you're making an appointment for your child or your teen, in the first appointment, we will ask that parents are present because we wanna go over all of the rules around therapy. When we work with teens and children, we want to make sure that parents understand and respect their child's zone of privacy around the therapy sessions. And we go over all of that with both parties so that everybody's on the same page around it. What do I need to bring in for my first appointment? You really don't need to bring anything with you we ask that you fill out all the paperwork through your private portal, which will come directly to us. However, if you do have additional supporting information, perhaps you went to a psychologist to have an evaluation for your child and you have that report, or perhaps you have additional documentation from your child's teacher or the school around challenges that your child has been experiencing throughout the school day, please do bring that supporting documentation with you to the first appointment so that your therapist can make a copy of that and add that to your chart. That information will better help us to be able to help them. How early should I get to my first appointment? We ask that you arrive five to 10 minutes before your appointment time. Chances are your therapist is likely with another appointment and we ask that you sit in the lobby and they will come out and get you and bring you back uh, when they're ready. What are the ages of the clients that you serve? We serve people ages four throughout the lifespan. It really just depends. We have a variety of therapists here 
that specialize in working with children, adolescents, and adults. Chances are when you call, our assistant will be able to determine which therapist will be best suited to address your concern. What are the types of populations that you work with? Well, one of the things that we truly specialize in are areas of neurodivergence, which is just a really, really big way of saying people whose nervous systems are wired a little bit differently. And that may show up in things like struggling with attention, not being able to stay on task, uh, being spacey, being messy, not being organized, being rigid or getting stuck in thinking about things in a certain way, um, struggling to relate socially with others, having difficult, difficulty identifying one's own emotional experience or predicting how other people are feeling or thinking in social relationships. And so sometimes people use terms like autism or ADHD or anxiety or depression to describe some of those things. And we specialize in treating those conditions along with individuals who've experienced some kind of trauma. Some people define trauma as having an experience that was unexpected or out of one's control that causes a lot of emotional and physiological uh, stressors afterwards. Sometimes people want to know the differences between a licensed mental health counselor, a licensed clinical social worker, and a licensed marriage and family therapist. Well, all three have completed a graduate training degree or a master's degree in their area of specialization. But the focus of the systemic understanding of people's experience might be viewed through a different uh, perspective in each, um, in each field. So for example, social workers are really focused on understanding uh, how to best advocate for issues pertaining to social justice, equality, and uh, advocacy. Marriage and family therapists are very focused on the relationships within a family that contribute to individuals um, uh, coming into therapy. So they're gonna be really focused on doing family work and the licensed clinical mental health counselor might be pulling from those other perspectives, um, but they're really gonna be focusing on the individual and um, helping them to become their best selves and uh, to live and function in as healthy a way as possible. Not to say that the other licensed folks aren't doing that too, they are but we all just bring a different lens. What are your policies around providing therapy services to children coming from families of divorce or parents that are no longer together? We do have a few policies that we feel are really important to making sure that the child's needs are prioritized. One of those is to make sure that both parents are part of the child's services. That means we ask that both parents agree to consent for their child to be in therapy and both parents provide input on what their child's needs are, what their concerns are for their child, and what their goals are for their child. Now, sometimes this can feel uncomfortable when there's a lot of conflict or tension. We do our best to communicate with each party separately, but we convey the same information to both parties. If you have any questions about that, you can call the office and we'd be more than happy to talk to you in greater detail of how that would work. 
given your specific um, set of circumstances. The one time this would be different is if one parent has a legal decree that says they have the ability to make sole uh, decisions around the child's health care or that they have sole custody um, and guardianship over that child. But if that's not in place, then we ask that both parents are involved in the therapy process. We also have a policy where we will not take part in the legal process of custody battles. And in our consent for providing services, we ask that parents agree that they will not call their child's therapist in to a custody legal case. This is because we believe it's not in the child's best interest for the therapist to disclose private, confidential information that the child has shared that could be used against one parent. What types of qualified supervision are offered? So here at Florida Art Therapy Services, I am a qualified supervisor for licensed mental health counselors and for individuals pursuing their registered art therapy credential. Colleen Hentz and Melissa Maki are both licensed clinical social workers that provide supervision for social work interns. We offer individual and group supervision. And the focus is on helping young clinicians or new clinicians working towards licensure to be able to provide the best quality care to the clients that they're serving. If you're ready to take the next step and come in to work with one of our highly trained and experienced therapists, please give us a call at 239-297-7099 or you can send a message directly through our website at www dot florida art therapy services dot com and as long as you're in the state of florida we can serve you via telehealth don't be afraid to reach out we're here for you